Hey guys, welcome back. Chris and Randy here with Marksman Shooting Sports at WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana. Thanks for tuning in to another unboxing video here on Marksman TV. Today we have quite a bit more to get through this week, so stick around. It's coming up now. All right, first up we have one from a customer in New Jersey. Thank you for sending this one to us. Here, I believe, is a PTR9 carbine, PTR9C, PTR Industries, but actually get it started after it would buy out a lot of the equipment from JDI, which would make a lot of the HK clones during the assault weapons ban era after the HKs were not able to come into the country anymore, the HK91 and HK93. PTR has made really good clones of the HK91 or the German G3. Later on, they moved into an MP5. Uh, variation such as this. The PTR we hit the market, I want to say about six or seven years ago. Really good representation of an MP5. Now what we have here is a carbine configuration. This is a fake suppressor that is pinned on, so it turns but does not unthread. Um, giving it the full 16 inch barrel length that is required if it is a rifle and not an SBR. So that is effectively what we have here. Pretty cool, rower lock delayed, straight blowback design uses the mp5 magazines but these are what are these metgar i think yes Met yeah, Gar. Metgar magazines um so anyway very cool nice little package mp5 clone what do you think about that one it looks new to me chris um i don't really see any marks on it i would say excellent condition yeah it looks very clean not even really any uh, sort of brass marking from ejection yeah. I would say excellent as well. Customer rated it at very good. So we are good with that. Big thank you to our customer in New Jersey. We'll move on to the next one. All right, next up we have one from a customer in Wisconsin. Thank you very much for sending this in to us. Yeah, we have peanuts down here, peanuts down here. Let's see if it rocks. <laughs> Shotgun, but I don't know what's in the car. Oh, it's an AP5. Look at that. And this is a Century Arms AP5. Look at that. We have this sort of back to back. AP5 is yet another MP5 clone. This one manufactured in Turkey and imported through Century Arms. Now, the AP5 would hit the market. It's probably been at least two or three years by now. Very interesting roller locking uh, blowback semi-automatic version of the famous HK MP5. Works the exact same way as the PTR. Again, another clone. There's Zenith makes one, there's this, there's the PTR. HK actually makes civilian semi-automatic MP5s as well. I think that about covers it. Um, but anyway, as far as all of the sort of replica MP5s, these are probably the least expensive, yet they are still expensive. Uh, so you can look up on the internet what these guys go for, but still a pretty good representation. What do you think about that one? A few little minor marks on it, very minor, Chris. Um, I would definitely say very good. I agree with that, and that is what the customer said. So we are good on that. Big thank you for sending us this one. We'll move on to the next one. All right, up next we have one from a customer in Missouri. Big thank you for sending this one to us. See what we got. All right, here we have a SIG. It's like a P365. This one has a laser, which... All right, guys, here's a SIG P365 with a crimson trace laser on it, uh, green laser dot. The P365, you guys, we've had a ton of these here on the channel before, so I'm not gonna go too much into it, but this would be the leader in sort of the micro-compact 
sort of one and a half stack version of the new concealed carry thing that everybody goes into. Glock would come out with the 43X, Springfield with the Hellcat, uh, Taurus with the GX4, the Toro, or whatever they call that, their version of it. So um, this is kind of where it all began. Uh, what do you think about that one? It's got some marks on the high edge there. Yeah, some holster marks. Um, other than that, it looks very good, so I would say very good. I agree. Customer said excellent. Yeah, there is some high edge wear right along here. Uh, it's easy to miss, though. Uh, you have to really hold it in the right light. And actually, I think that may have just rubbed off. Actually, I think I just rubbed it off with my fingers because hmm. I don't see it now. A little bit of holster wear in the front end. I, I would be okay with excellent. Very good to excellent. Customer said excellent. So we're good yeah, with we're that. Good. Cool pistol. Thank you so much for sending this one in to us. All right, up next we have one from a customer in Connecticut. Big thank you for sending this one to us. All right, Walther, is it a PDP? Um, yes. Okay, Walther PDP with the polymer frame. PDPF, right? Um, yes, FS. Yeah. PDP FS polymer frame with the optics plate. These are somewhat new from Walther, maybe a year or two old. Uh, they do make the steel frame con uh, configuration. This is the polymer, so a little bit less expensive. Two seven, 18 round magazines, interchangeable back straps, and speed loader. I've had a couple of these on here before, so you guys have already seen them. Really nice firearm from Walther, and they're sort of combat duty or sort of range clinking line. Uh, good home defense option as well. Uh, what do you think about that one? Looks like new, Chris. I would say excellent condition. Totally agree, and that is what the customer said, so we're good with that. We'll move on to the next one. All right, next up, we have one from a customer in Connecticut. Thank you for sending this in to us. All right. SIG P229, yep, SAS. The SAS is the SIG anti-snag, so they sort of rounded the edges, cut down on the control size and things like that. At least I'm pretty sure, well, SAS is the SIG anti-snag for the P365, I'm sure with all their handguns, it's, that's what it stands for. You can tell everything's rounded off, there's no rail, all the edges are sort of rounded instead of the typical squared fashion you see on SIGs. Uh, so to make a nice, more sleek and ergonomic concealed carry package in the 229, which in and of itself is a more compact version of the 226, the full-size gun. Uh, this one is chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. The 229s, they would make a 40, 357 SIG, 9mm, and I believe that that is it. Two 12-round magazines. Really nice pistols. And I'm not sure if they're making the SAS 229s anymore or not. I'm not sure if they are. They're not. Um, anyway, cool pistol. What do you think about that one? I would have to say excellent condition, Chris. I totally agree with that. And I think that is, yeah, that's what the customer said. So we are good on that one. Again, big thank you for sending us this one, SIG P229 SAS. All right, up next, we have one from a customer in Arizona. Thank you for selling this one to us. A Ruger, a Ruger, a Smith & Wesson, and a Keltec. Keltec P17. These actually came out, I want to say it's been about a couple years ago now. Uh, it is a 17 round capacity, 22 LR. Um, carries a lot of the same looks as the PMR30 and the CP33. It sort of has the traditional Caltex stylized in the waffle pattern on the grip. Mostly polymer construction. Uh, the slide is really just the rear section of, let's see, there's the safety the rear section of, this, of the uh, pistol. So because you don't have so much mass to move, it's gonna be a little bit more reliable with a 22 LR, which inherently isn't the most reliable design, a semi-automatic and 22. You wanna keep the mass of the moving parts as light as possible. Of course, you're reliant on the energy of the cartridge itself to cycle the pistol, which is what they've done here. I know a lot of people really like these little P17s, uh, good little range plankers, or maybe even concealed carrier if you have enough confidence in it. So pretty cool little pistol. What do you think about that one? I would say excellent condition, Chris. I agree, that's what the customer said. All right, next we have Smith & Wesson. You guys have seen these before. Easy Shield. 
coming from the Shield family, the EZ line would come out maybe three years ago now, made in 9mm and in 380. Now it's called EZ because all the controls are easy to use, very light recoil spring, uh, everything down to the little assisted follower on the magazine. So people with compromised hand strength tend to gravitate towards these just because they're very simple to use. A lot of people who have weaker hand strength tend to shy away from semi-automatics, mainly because it's harder to fight that recoil spring. But in here, they've made it incredibly easy. I can grab it with just two fingers and manipulate every control of this firearm. So really cool. What do you think about that one? Excellent condition, Chris. I agree, and that is what the customer said, so we are good on that one. Here we have a Ruger, it's like an LCP2 chambered in 380. They also make these in 22 LR. Oh, this is the Max. So this is the sort of uh, coffin pattern magazine. Double stacks, a double column, single feet, so you have a higher capacity in, the, in here than the, than the standard LCP and LCP2. Again, we talked about the CP365 going to the new concept of the widened magazine inside the standard frame body, which is what they've done here with the 380, making it a really good, what's the capacity on these, like 10 or 11? Something like that. 10. 10. So it's 10 rounds of 380 and a small pocket size fits in the palm of your hand type of package, which is really cool. Giving you a lot more firepower and a really easy to carry package. So those are nice. What do you think about that one? Now the only marks I see are just on top of the barrel. Uh, so I would which say excellent have. condition. I agree. And that is what the customer said there. And then what's our last one there, Randy? Uh, we have a Ruger LCP2 and 22 LR. Uh, these are pretty popular pocket guns. I actually carried one of these in my pocket for a while. Um, they're just, uh, as we all know, 22 LR, not your standard, um, you know, primary concealed carry. But for for a backup gun, you're wearing a suit. Lady wants to carry it in her purse. It's still something. Um, they're good shooters. It looks like it has an enhanced trigger on it too. Oh yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yep. Anyway, uh, what do you think about that one condition-wise? Excellent condition, Chris. I agree. So we're four for four. Big thank you to our customer for sending us these. We'll move on to the next one. Next up, we have one from South Carolina. Thank you to the customer who sent this in to us. Back us home. Grips. And magazine. Here we have a Beretta. Okay, we have a Beretta. Poke through the box. Ooh, very nice. This is a Beretta. This is an Inox M9A1. Ooh, very tight. Uh, so the M9, of course, as everybody knows, was adopted by the United States military, I want to say in about 1982, replacing the 1911 in service. Since then, they've really made a splash from the commercial market. A lot of people have really liked the Beretta offerings and they've really expanded on their offerings. So you have the M9, the commercial version would be the 92 FS. Then they will go into the M9A1, which is what this is by adding an accessory rail down to the bottom. The M9, was there an M9A2? I don't remember one. That's from an A3. Yeah, then they went to the A3 for some yeah. reason. They uh, like odd numbers. They like odd numbers, but how do you explain the M9A4? The guy who didn't like odd numbers was fired. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so now they have the M9A3, the M9A4, which is the most recent, but the M9A1, a nice standard M9, but with the accessory rail added down here to the bottom. Now the Inox configuration is the stainless finish. So the Inox finish type you can get on any of their products or not any, but most of them. Anytime you see a stainless from Beretta, they know it as the Inox, which is what this is, making it just aesthetically a little bit more pleasing. Now beyond that, this is also the compacts. You're gonna notice the grip is a little bit shorter here, I think giving us 13 rounds. That's a 10 round. Uh, 13 is the standard capacity here. They made these in nine. The 96 series was the 40 caliber. Uh, so very nice, compact nine millimeter Inox A1. Uh, not too common that you see these around very much. So pretty cool pistol. What do you think about that? I would say excellent condition, Chris. I 100% agree. And that Beautiful. is what the customer said. Looks like new. So we're good with that. We'll move on to the next one. All right, up next, we have one from my customer in Pennsylvania. Big thank you for sending this one to us. <laughs> Never. All 
All right, Nighthawk. Can't go wrong with Nighthawk. And we have zip ties. This is where the scissors shine. Snap. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I like the look of that. Nighthawk custom. This was, God, what do they call this thing? The John Wick? Firehawk. So the Firehawk 2011. So the 2011 is the 2011 configuration, which is actually really made popular by Staccato. They're the ones that make most of those. So you have sort of a metal frame but a polymer grip extension I guess you'd call it and trigger guard lightens up the weight on it makes it a double stack pretty much all 1911 or 2011 configurations are nine millimeter as far as I know although we did run across a um, staccato 2011 and 45 which yeah. apparently is pretty uncommon so uh, single action only as most 1911 configurations are now this one does have a compensator down there at the end so you notice pull back the slide of the compensator unit is right there at the end which was indicative of this line um, cool pistol really nice balance now Nighthawk is a custom firearm manufacturer so they have their baseline yeah they have their baseline manufacturer stuff you usually fill out an order sheet you can get god really good trigger um, you can add different sort of site configurations finish configurations, so you can really build it out the way you want uh, Premium 1911 up there with Wilson Combat to some extent now. They've got a little bit more mass production on a lot of their stuff, but Cabot, uh, who else am I thinking? Les Bear at Brown. I put them in that camp. So Nighthawk makes fantastic 1911s. They're pricey though. What do you think about that one? Don't see a mark on it, Chris. Uh, I would say excellent. I totally agree with that. So we are good there. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, next up, Chris, we have one from a customer in Ohio. Thank you for sending it in to us. I believe so. Yep. It's not the bottom of the Bud Light box, is it? No, it's not. Alright, All right, what we have here, this is a Citadel. This is sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum, although they're nice pistols. Citadel 1911. This is very much on the economy side of things when it comes to 1911s like Rock Island. These are probably made in the Philippines as well. So Rock Island's made in the Philippines. These are made in the Philippines, probably at the same place, I am sure. Um, just a basic 1911. Now the cool thing about these, the Citadels, I see a lot oftentimes is they do have upgraded features on them as far as 1911s go. So you have fiber optic sights, extended beaver tail safety, skeletonized hammer and trigger, nice checkered grips, probably Coco Bolo. And trigger's basic A1 feeling, standard reset. Um, just a basic 1911, but not super expensive. Now this is in the officer size, giving it about a three and a half inch barrel. Commander's gonna be about four and a half. Government's your standard five inch barrel. This one's in 45 ACP. What do you think about that? Few very minor marks. Um, there is a takedown mark. Um, very light though. I noticed very light. handling marks on the front. Yeah, side. I would say very good would I, be fair. I, I'd agree with that. I go high end good, low end very good, somewhere in there. So we'd be fine either way. I do not have the paperwork here, so I do not know what the customer said, but we'll look that up later. And here we have another Citadel. This one a little bit more has been done to it. It's got sort of a bronze, burnt and bronze type look to it. I'm sure this is a Cerakote finish. It looks like it. Um, or gold or FDE, whatever you want to call it. Also on the officer size, uh, this one is a nine millimeter, not the 45, but also from Citadel, just like this one. So it's just a different minor variation there of the last one we just took a look at. What do you think about that one? Uh, this has more scratches on it, and unfortunately being in that Cerakote or whatever the coating is, it's impossible to do anything with that. Um, I would probably put it at the high end of good. Um, Yes, yeah, a high end good. If the customer said very good, we'd be okay with that. I'd say it's kind of bordering there on the edge. So, anyway, very cool pistols. Thank you for selling these to us. And we will move on to our last box. All right, to end this one up, we have one from a customer in Texas. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. So, we have a SIG. It appears to be an M18. Yes, P320 M18. 
So the SIG P320 guys uh, has been out for quite some time, coming off of the P250, which was hammer fire, the P320 was striker. Now when the XM-17 handgun trials would come out from the United States military, SIG would submit the P320 as part of the, it was a modular handgun trial. Now the modularity is what makes the P320 popular. It has a fire control unit that is the serialized part. So as long as you have one, you can buy different shells and different slides and mix and match to whatever you want to do. Now SIG did win the XM-17 handgun trial with the M-17 type classified pistol that's now being used in the M-18, which is this one, which is a slightly smaller configuration. Uh, now this is a civilian commercial version with the black controls and things like that. They've had a small run of the, uh, the M-17s that were actually used, issued very briefly and then returned. And then they have the commemorative ones, which we've had a couple on here as well. So. Very cool, M18, popular pistol. What do you think about that one? Well, Chris, it's not a Glock 19X. Um, <laughs> it does have a scratch. But they didn't win, so th that means they're not good. They must not be good. Um, the scratch right there on the slide is a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd call that minor, but it is, okay. there is a scratch there. Um, I'm gonna say very good is what my call would be. I'd say there is a scratch there on the slide. If it wasn't for that, I would totally call it excellent. Yeah, but I agree. A very high end of very good. And yeah. customer said excellent. It's close enough. We're not going to nitpick over that. It's a very light scratch. You have to catch it in the light right, but it is there. Uh, but anyway, guys, the uh, what are these 21 rounders? Yeah, 21 round mags and the operator patch. So you can sew that onto your collared shirt and go to work with it. So we're done with jacket. Yeah. Since I'm a sick fan. <laughs> there you go. So you're now a sick fan, huh? So anyway, guys, uh, that wraps up this video for us. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed, please let us know by hitting that like button. Please also consider subscribing to our channel and hit that bell notification button so you know when we are posting content. We're going to leave you guys off with that. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And you're watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I always do that one. <laughs> I'm put it, it on, I would have put it on John and then amused myself, but uh, I won't point a gun at John. Not, not after what happened this last time. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. We said we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> so the guy that liked the odd numbers is now in charge of marketing for Bud Light. Yeah. Your wife watches the show? No. Good.